Hi, it's me Jazzy. I'm back with another tech related video and today we're talking about AVOMeters. This particular one was sent in by regular viewer Paul. So big thanks for that. This is an AVO 8 Mark 7, which puts my AVO 8 Mark 4 to shame. This one's actually in quite poor condition. This one looks fantastic and is the newest model of AVO that I've worked with. Now, it seems that Paul's been at it again and sent me another box, which apparently is not only a surprise, but is also something that I can use to fix the cutout problem on this one. So, let's have a look. I'm intrigued, I'm excited to see what I've got in the box. I do love opening boxes. Good things come in boxes. Wow, I've got a letter. That's rather nice. Well, this is rather fantastic. It seems that Paul has sent me another AVO 8 Mark 7 to use as parts to replace the cutout on this one, which is apparently in much better condition than this one. This is fantastic. Apparently this one needs attention on the resistance ranges and the battery terminals are corroded, which they are not on this one. Apparently it's possible to swap the whole lot, including the meter movement over from this meter to this one, and this will be fully functional. The letter says he's also included some of my favorite test leads, or I'm intrigued, and an original AVO test lead from 1972 still in its packet. I love that sort of stuff plus random transistors that serve as packaging. I'm getting more and more intrigued to dive into this box. Hope you can make good use of these. Best regards from Paul, one of my regular viewers. So many thanks. I love receiving stuff like this. This is a fantastic project. I love these AVO meters. And this is the first time I've really looked at a Mark 7. So let's get this one out. various packaging what do we have okay aha does indeed have an intact cutout fantastic so this could be swapped across to this one yep does indeed have corroded battery terminals but the great thing is this is going to yield some seriously useful parts to get this avometer 8 mark 7 up and running i'm so chuffed by this this is really thoughtful because this means i can make a fully working unit now that's awesome. Let's see what else is in store in this box. I'm intrigued. Okay, so various packaging. Ah, there's the back of the battery compartment for that one. Wow, it's a whole bag of transistors here. This is fantastic. Wow, you never know when you're gonna need one of these. I do use a lot of these, it's true. This just gets better and better. It's it's like a gold mine this box and we've got some test leads fantastic always handy and oh and a probe oh nice okay and some more original leads what date do we have on this 1972 wow look at that and still in the packet absolutely love stuff like this it really shows the history of the older test gear Anything with a date on it, I really love to see. This is awesome, I love this kind of stuff. So as you can see, my existing AVO collection, which was limited to this AVO 8 Mark IV with the broken strap and a hole in the side, has now been seriously upgraded. So now we can give this one a new lease of life by using the parts from this one. So massive thanks to Paul for not only sending me an AVO 8 Mark VII, but also another one for spares and the PDF of the service manual and some cables and bits and bobs as well. So massive shout out to Paul. Thank you very much. That's so thoughtful. And I'm really going to enjoy delving into this AVO. I'm really looking forward to this. So let's get this spares one apart and take out the bits we need to repair this one. So the first thing to do is to get the spares AVO on the bench so we can open it up and get all the goodies we need to repair our good one. So flip it over, you can see the battery compartments on the back. There's also two fuses. There's a one amp fuse, which goes to the right of the D-cell holder there. And there's a 10 amp fuse in a fuse holder. At the you need a D-cell and you need a 15 volt, which is a BLR121 or B121 battery. These are for when you're testing the resistance ranges. So to get the AVO apart is very simple. There's just four screws on the back. There's a little bit of a seal around the outside to stop the moisture getting into the meter. 
to be working in damp places. These avos were used all over the place. Lift the back off very carefully because the wires are still attached to the board. Now apologies for any glare off the board. It's because I haven't installed the new film lighting yet. I will get round to that in between projects. So next we need to get the board out. So you have to remove the two standoffs that are at the bottom. This is a double stacked PCB with some spaces in between. Then there's one screw there to come out. Mostly flat headed screws in these meters, as you would expect for the age of them. Now you have to remove the three knobs from the front, so you're able to pull the board through from the back. And there's three little dust covers inside the knobs, so it's worth making sure you don't lose those during the disassembly. So now I can lift the board out. So that's the part that we're going to be replacing will be the cutout and meter assembly all in one. Just remove the power cables from the board. And then you've got two other cables here, which it's worth making a note. I always take photos before I disassemble anything, just so you make sure you get the cables back in the right places. So you've got a little power plus and minus cable there that's got to go back on the bottom, just fits on a couple of little header pins. So I had to just detach that when pulling the board out and I've got to remember to put those back in when I reassemble. Again, a little bit of glare from my rubbish lights. I will get on to sorting those out. Just going to remove this cable tie so I can separate this ground lead that goes into the back of the case here. There's just one lead that will need desoldering from inside the back of the case so I can remove that whole mechanism. So removing the two standoffs from the top of the meter movement. So all these cables will need desoldering in a moment when I take this out. So I'm able to remove this part and put the replacement one in. I always take loads of photos whenever I'm disassembling anything before I even start disassembling. Always take plenty of photos, then you've got a reference to look back on. So I'm going to desolder all these cables just so I can get this board out of my way so I can work a bit easier. These come out nice and easily with a bit of heat on them. So when we put the replacement in, we'll need to give that board a little clean up before we can solder these wires back on. But that means I can get this board out of the way while I'm working on the meter movement. Now we've got the two standoffs off and there's one little nut on the side and two crosshead screws at the bottom to remove. Unfortunately, I don't have any imperial size nut runners, so I'm having to resort to some big old pliers here. Just remove the two crosshead screws and the whole meter movement lifts out. You have to be super careful not to catch the really delicate needle on the face plate when you take the meter movement out. Okay, so that's the faulty unit out. It's really nicely made. It's a lovely piece of engineering. Right, let's move this one out of the way. Okay, so this is our working movement with the working cutout. Now we can get our first AVO back on the bench. Now this is the one with the cutout problem. As you can see, it's missing its cutout button and the cutout doesn't stay in. It immediately pops back out. So we know there's a problem with that one. It could be that I come back on the spares one at some point and see whether I can delve further into that cutout and make that one work also. So again, flip the AVO over, remove the battery compartment. Got some goodies in here. There's the little battery adapter and 10 amp fuse. That's going to be useful. As you can see on this AVO, the fuse holder is missing. So I'll be taking that off the spares one as well. So same process again, having done it once already, just remove the four screws from the back of the unit and carefully remove the front panel. And there we go, all looks very familiar. I'm pretty sure we've just seen one of these. Once again, remove the two standoffs from the bottom of the board and the one flat headed screw, remove the knobs off the front. Once you've done it once, it's all very easy to do it a second time. That's it, remove the PCBs and take the cables off, power cables and the two at the back there. Again, remembering which way around they're gonna go. Cause, and of course, those two little power leads on the bottom side of the board. Now, removing the standoffs from the meter movement. Exactly the same as before. One little nut there. 
and two crosshead screws. That's it, and the whole lot comes out. Again, being very careful with the pointer, even though we're not using this meter movement, I might be using it in the future. Now we can bring in the working meter unit. So you can see the faulty cutout on this one. When you press it in, it just pops straight back out on the good one from the spares unit. It stays in exactly as it should. We're making some progress here. So let's move our good meter out the way for a moment as I'm going to need to remove the cables from the faulty one. Again, I'm going to desolder this blade from the case. I'm taking photos once again so I can remember which way around the colored leads go because it's vital that you get all these back in the right order. I've got the service manual and circuit diagram that Paul sent me, so I've been referring to that throughout the process, but it's still good to document. Again, I've speeded up all the boring bits so you don't have to sit through me unsoldering multiple wires. Is it unsoldering or desoldering? So this is the faulty cutout unit that we're removing. As you can see, when you press the cutout, it just springs back. That's no good at all. You can see it doesn't stay down. Here's the good one. Now the good one, when you press the cutout, it stays in, which is exactly what you want. They're a little bit grubby inside, so I'm gonna take this opportunity to give the mirror a good clean up so it looks the part. Now, the other thing is the cutout switch was missing from the original AVO, so I'm going to use one from the donor unit, although it still retains its original spring inside, so we may as well reuse that. That's a spare spring from the donor unit, so I'll keep hold of that. All these bits and bobs will be useful one day. This is a nice, easy little job. The switch just pops in from the front, and then just pop the spring in using the original one here. And there's just two little plastic retaining lugs on the back of the switch. You've got to get the spring. One side is easy, second side I'm just going to use my little flat screwdriver to persuade it into place. And there we go. Now to put the meter faceplate on very carefully, just being sure not to catch that very, very delicate needle movement there. But once that's in place, then we can pop the whole unit back into the front of the case. A little bit of persuasion to get that screw through and that little nut on the side. Putting the two crosshead screws back in and the two top standoffs and the one on the side there. Great, so that's our meter movement whole assembly back in with the working cutout. Now to give this board a bit of a clean because we need to attach all the wiring that comes from the PCBs. Just using a bit of solder wick to get the old solder off and clean out the holes so we can get the wires in properly. And then some isopropyl alcohol to remove years and years of grime and old flux. So we've got a nice clean board to work with. And just making sure the holes are nice and clean so we can get the wires through now. Now this is the fiddly part and remember to refer to your circuit diagram or your photos that you took to get all the wires in the right order. Beautiful, quick bit of soldering on there. And just checking my continuity. I'm always a bit belt and braces with stuff like this. I'd rather double check it now than have to take the whole thing apart. All looking good, I'm happy with that. It's time to reassemble our AVOs. So back on with the plus and minus. It goes on the underneath of the board. Fantastic, board sits in and reconnect the cables, making sure we've got them all in the right order. And to resolder that lead, into the case. There's a little bit of residue from some old grease or something inside the back of the case, so I'll give that a bit of a clean up before reassembly. Really making some great progress now with this meter. Screwing the PCB back in and then the two standoffs on the bottom and the whole lot can go back in. Fantastic! Oh, it's almost looking like a finished AVO. Push the front back in. Now I've got the one amp fuse on the right hand side there. And I've also taken the 10 amp fuse holder and the 10 amp fuse that came in the battery compartment, which was working. I checked them both before popping them back in. I don't have any footage of that as I did that off camera as the camera battery died while I was doing that. So pop the four screws back in, make sure the little dust covers are in place for the three knobs and then fit the knobs back on. They're really easy, they just push on, super easy and it's looking like we have a finished AVO. There we go, it's all back together now. 
I've just put a 10 amp fuse in there and a 1 amp fuse was already there which I've checked both for continuity. We're looking good so let's hook it up to my power supply for a quick test. So I've set my power supply for 8.4 volts, just a random amount to do a quick test on this meter. So I've selected DC volts and I'm going to change that to the 10 volt range. Switch on my power supply and there we go, 8.4 volts, fantastic. This is looking very promising. So that was just a quick test on DC volts, just to check that the AVO is actually functioning now and seems totally fine. And the cutout problem is sorted. Excellent, I'm super happy with that. There's obviously more tests I can do and I'll most likely do a part two to this video where we can look at doing the tests in a bit more detail and maybe have a look if there's something I can do with the other parts AVO because it seems too good to just let it lie. I'm wondering if there's something I can do with it. Always thinking of ideas, but I definitely think we'll be taking a more detailed look at this. I need to get myself the special battery that fits in here and I need a D cell as well. So we can check out the resistance function and we'll do some other tests on this as well just to make sure all the functions are fully functionable. So thanks for watching. I've really enjoyed delving into this old AVO 8. These old bits of kit are an absolute joy to work on. Massive Massive thank you to Paul for sending me the AVO 8 and the spares AVO and all the other bits and bobs. I've really enjoyed it. I've had loads of fun taking these apart and they're really nice to work on. So massive thanks to that and thanks to everyone for watching. We we'll most likely will do a part two on this where we can look at them in a bit more detail. So as always, thanks very much for watching. If you're enjoying my videos, please feel free to hit the like and subscribe button always massively appreciated and a massive thanks to everyone that's subscribed to my channel so far. Join me again when we'll be looking at more vintage test equipment, repairs, electronics kits and retro gaming. So take care and I'll see you on the next one.